Welcome to the Fall 2022 Halloween Challenge, hosted by Meg at Lubby Jubbly Furniture. Be sure to check out Meg's channel, and you'll surely want to subscribe. Also, check out the entire playlist. You're going to want to watch all these videos and subscribe to all the channels on this playlist. The story you're about to hear is a legend in this area, and you'll find it in the 10 Blair County Mysteries. You can purchase this book at La Vintage Decor. All profits benefit the Blair County Historical Society. Also a special shout out to Taryn from Elegant Upgrades, who designed the decoupage paper that I use on my project. I'll put the link in the description box where you can purchase it from Zazzle. Here's this beautiful secretary before. So settle in and listen to the tale of The White Lady of Wapsie. One late spring evening years ago, a young newly married couple left their wedding reception in Altoona and drove up through Juniata Gap heading north on Wapsonotic Mountain. Their happiness with themselves that day showed in every way. Everyone had been so happy to see them so full of joy. The groom drove carefully around the treacherous curves of the narrow, steep, and winding road, locally called Wapsie Road. A warm spring rain fell lightly on the roadway as the young couple chatted blissfully of the long day's happenings. Close to halfway up the mountain, something suddenly caused the young man to swerve hard to his left. The car tumbled over into the steep ravine. No one knows what caused this dreadful accident. Some surmised that a deer had bounded down onto the roadway from the high bank. No one, however, witnessed the accident. At that time, no guardrails ran along the ravine's side. The couple's car plunged disastrously, straight down hundreds of feet towards the spring run. The bride and groom were tossed violently from the car. The night was still, save for pattering rain and the plaintive calls of whippoorwills nearby. Neither bride nor groom stirred from where each had fallen. An hour, perhaps, went by before the young girl, still in her beautiful wedding gown, gained consciousness, and she called out for her husband and frantically crawled about, here and there, groping in the dark, until at last she finally found him. He was headless near the car. He had not survived the horrible plunge off the road. Most likely their own car had decapitated him. No one could doubt the poor girl's reaction upon seeing her beloved, beheaded husband with such a grievous wound. Her screams silenced the birds, but her cries fell on no human ears. Now, delirious, she jumped up and wildly pushed through the mountain laurel and rhododendron towards the stream below, searching for her husband's head. Her fruitless search drove her further down into the ravine and farther into madness. Alone and lost on a mountainside, the beautiful young bride disappeared into the woods, not to be seen by anyone for weeks. The girl wandered hopelessly up and down Wapsie Mountain in search for her husband, looking to find him whole again so this nightmare would end. She even crossed far westward towards the Buckhorn, walking along the southern rim of the Allegheny Plateau, which goes from the mountain to Crescent. Back then, it was very rough terrain, full of timber and rattlesnakes. Her meandering often took her up to the famous Wapsie Lookout, now bereft of its popular dance hall and lookout tower. Not far off, there is Lookout Road, and the poor young lady, still clad in white, 
stumbled upon a small abandoned stone cottage where she found refuge finally. The building lay just beyond the ore cottage on the right going up the road towards the lookout, and few could see it for all the trees and shrubs which surrounded it. The girl held forth there, sustaining herself mostly on wild huckleberries. It did not take long before many people reported glimpsing her movements across the mountain. Mostly, they told of a woman dressed in white, tall, willowy, and dark hair. Others said her hair was flaxen. All agreed, though, she had seemed out of sorts and agitated as she came in and out of view. Many times, sightings of a lady came from near the point where the couple's car had careened off the roadway. Many sightings were reported from below and upward, along Wapsy Road, past the much-frequented Old Spring on the left and the abandoned railway bed on the right. She was seen up past the pond on the same side atop the mountain, and even as far north as Highland Fling on the county line, now only a place named after a recent fire burned the landmark bar and dance hall to the ground. A local family named Finley reported seeing her near their home and the adjacent old railroad station close to where Lookout Road begins. Locally famous as purveyors of home-baked goods in the Green Avenue Market in downtown Altoona, the Finleys sometimes set out their sticky buns for the forlorn woman in white. Most mountain residents sympathize with the lost woman, who seemed to then be trapped in time, sentenced by her own mind to roam forever on her lonely, never-ending, unrelenting search. Others, more uninformed, believe the young woman meant harm to anyone who crossed paths with her. They sensed an anger in her fleeting movements along the oak and hemlock bordered roads of Wapsononic Mountain. No evidence of malice, though, has ever been documented. A long, forgotten sealed Altoona police file is said to exist regarding the case of the woman in white. Since no one witnessed the accident, and it was days before it was discovered, a mystery soon enshrouded the survivor of this crash. Some reported seeing the white lady hitchhiking on Wapsie Road. Others said she was seen standing by the roadside at night with her hand raised for a ride. Many swear, upon being given a lift, she would sit quietly in the back and at some short distance ahead suddenly disappear from the car that she was in. These accounts have continued over many decades. Others tell of a wispy figure in white walking along Lover's Lane, roads and pull-offs along Lookout Road, prompting young Parkers to head back down the mountain before some tragedy might befall them. Perhaps she was signaling, slow down, slow down, go easy, be careful, don't do anything rash. Also a mystery is a similar story about newlyweds in another accident. It is said that long before the present figure in white, another woman succumbed to a similar fate. In her case, as a newlywed, she and her husband fell over the frighteningly steep left bank while riding up Wapsy in horse and buggy. The ever-treacherous road was dirt, or red dog as they called it then. Cut out safety bumps called thank you ma'ams, crossed the roads on steep stretches to slow the horse-drawn wagons, especially on their steep descents. The woman survived the accident, and it is said she lived to an old age. She is said to lie buried now in some very old cemetery off Richland Road. Some believed her to be the mother of the sad young girl who lost her way more recently. <laughs> Thank you.
White Lady of Wapsie, in fact, has been seen at the Richland Road Cemetery, kneeling outside its old church. The utter coincidence of mother-daughter brides suffering the same fate seems too much to believe, but truth does seem to often defy fiction. Becoming a legend over time, the White Lady of Wapsie still roams the mountain high above the lights of Altoona, Pennsylvania.